Yeah, I was born to be a favorite. Uh -huh. Look, ma, I'm on the bill, but I made it. Yeah. That's what I dream every day, so I say it. Yeah, hey, but I'm humble. Kendrick, Hello. straight out of the jungle. I'm fearless. Yeah, hey, but you win some, you lose some. Oh. I'm about to start the show. Yeah. You try to knock me down. Whoa. You try to take my crown. But look at me now. Yeah, look at me now. Look at me now. Yeah, look at me now. Hey. Hey, you cannot stop me. You cannot stop me. No. Hey, you cannot stop me. You cannot stop me. Go. Africa TV. Free Cup Studio. Love. 2022 GSL Season 3. Welcome back to GSL Code S. We're in day two of the round of 10 Group A. Uh, we're going to be finishing this group off tonight. I'm Artosis, and alongside me is State. Yeah, you guys had uh, Tasteless and me cast before, and now Tasteless is going to be coming into the studio a little bit later, and you got me and Dan. We just keep trading you back and forth, man. Truly, this is a revenge cast. <laughs> I saw him casting with you, and you guys look so happy together, and I'm like, I'm going to see how you feel about this, Tasteless. So... Uh, it's going to be you and me today. Yeah, uh, I'm excited. Yeah, Tasteless, uh, actually, he's going to bring his dad down to the studio, give him a little tour and hang out with him. So, uh, you know, a parent visiting Korea, that must be very exciting. And Yeah. Uh, so now I get to cast with you, and it's it, it's actually a great day for that as well. Like, I mean, we have a lot of great storylines developing in Group A here. Uh, chief amongst them, in my opinion, Gumiho, the based Gumi god, is back, and he is looking good. Yeah, he's making a lot of battle cruisers, taking names, getting a lot of wins. And also, Ragnarok really surprised me. He's yeah. had a great showing so far in Group A as well. <laughs> I, I was actually talking about this with Tasteless. Yeah. Because that is that is what you're supposed to say. Is like, Ragnarok's kind of surprising me. He's, like, killing it. But for the last two seasons, he made it in the round of six because he True. is actually a killer now. But, like, I think all of our brains haven't caught up to where he actually is, especially based on how he's playing. Mm -hmm. Where, like, the first season one this year, it was, like, all proxy hatches, and he went into the round of six. So yeah, like, that's uh, that's something that I noticed yeah. the first time in Group A is, like, his late game ZVT actually looks really good. Yeah, Yeah, right? ZVP as well. Like, he, he gets just to really four or five right bases, now. and he's scary. Someone's got to replace Rogue. And is it going to is it gonna be Dark <laughs> or is it going to be Ragnarok? We don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Weak one results on the board right now. Gumiho and Ragnarok. Really uh, leading the pack here in yeah. Group A. And um, Hero, not the best performance. Kind of a shaky recall in a critical match in Group A previously yeah. means that he's not at the top of the board right now. He's third place in this group. And he's got to have a good performance if he wants to come in with a high seed for the round of six. Yeah, I, I think he's still going to make it through, honestly. like oh, I think sure. those top three you see there are very, very likely. But Bunny and Solar have small chances to still come back. Solar, though, <clears throat> I think he has to like really deliver immediately. I think he has to yeah. basically win out from here. I mean, going 0-4 in map score is a really tough start. Yeah. It's uh, it's tough to come back from that, even if third place kind of qualifies you. Yeah, yeah. So. He needs he needs Hero and Bunny to both kind of tank, and he needs to do well. Like, yeah. it's not just in his hands. And betting on Hero tanking is not a winning bet. Because, <laughs> no. I mean, one better re or one lack of a bad recall, and it's yeah. a totally different group, you know? Hero might have been on top or at least in second place, and... Start things off today. Solar versus Ragnarok, I believe the only mirror matchup we have today, and then it's going to be a lot of guys going up against Terrans. Well, that's, uh, that's how we like it here. It's going to be a nice long day. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Solar versus uh, Ragnarok, this is like, if Solar 2 O's here, the group becomes much more interesting. Yeah. If Ragnarok wins at all, we're like really close to knowing exactly how the group is going to go. Yeah, if Ragnarok wins, it might just be um, a deciding match between, you know, Hiro and Gumiho to see who's going to come like in between that. second and third. Because right now, just like you, I'm feeling like the top three in this group, it's really solid. Yeah. Uh, but he still has chances, though. He's only course, minus two. It's not that It's not that far away if the right things happen. Yeah, we'll see what happens. And Ragnarok looking to solidify that lead a little bit here. ZBZ on the board. Yeah, and, you know, uh, I mean, it's CBZ. I guess anything can happen. Ragnarok has been playing better than Solar. But in my brain, like in my twisted little commentator brain, I do still feel like Solar's better than Ragnarok, although Ragnarok has truly proven otherwise in this year at least. Yeah, he's certainly been looking strong. All right, set one. Cosmic Sapphire is loaded up. 
Solar vs. Ragnarok, let's get started. I can do this all day. Onside Gaming, Solar. Alpha X, Ragnarok. You all right. I'll get a little pool first here from Ragnarok. Yeah, nothing too cheeky. See what he ends up doing with that. Like maybe expecting a, a cheese out of Solar. I'm not really entirely <laughs> sure about it. Solar does like his uh, early pools in ZVZ. Oh, look, he does go gas too. Huh. Actually, kind of was not expecting that. Yeah, I was thinking kind of a pool expand, just play it safe, you know? But yeah, yeah. Instead, throwing down an extractor. Mm -hmm. All right. These two well. overlords kind of kissing right there in the middle. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Solar. Oh, here from California. That's where I'm from. Tenth year of watching GSL. Welcome to the studio, guys. Damn, a decade of watching this game. That is that is sick. I actually met those guys outside the studio. So, <laughs> welcome, guys. Thanks for uh, coming down. And look at that. Six links in production too. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I guess he just runs around the Overlord here and tries to put pressure on. But what is the follow-up? Like, is he going to continue aggression? Is he going to continue pressure? Already started drone production again, so maybe just a little bit of light pressure. But, yeah, kind of a odd build, honestly. Like, I, I could see this being a gasless opening, just like yeah. go for six links and maybe try to snipe a drone or two, try and force some reaction from your opponent. But getting speed, hmm. Yeah, I'm not. I'm honestly not really sure what his his oh, aim is. Lanes. But there's yeah. okay. Yeah, he only popped one drone out in between here. Wouldn't that be funny? Well, that's a Ooh. nice little surround there, dude. My God, that was that was a very nice little move. The way he just popped the links back in held position. Yeah, that was great. He got great. two link kills like instantly, basically for free. Yeah, and this is already becoming a pretty big problem here for Solar. Waiting on that queen to pop now. Dude, there's something about the way Ragnarok is playing recently recently being this entire year where I'm like, is is this stuff supposed to be working? And then I continually watch it work and I continually do not update my oh. his status in my brain. But look at how many links he's actually making. He's gonna have link speed first as well. He's gonna throw down the baneling nest. Like So we're just taking the third hatch and doesn't have a baneling nest. Dude. Well, that third hatch, first things first, that third hatch isn't going to make it. But I think Ragnarok's going to go for the kill rather than the hatch. Yeah, he's pulling the lings in his main base, too. So this is going to have the chance to take Solar completely by surprise. He still thinks it's just these six lings, but there are 31 on the field right now. And here we go, oh running boy. past the Overlord. Solar knows what's up now, but it might be too late. Oh, my God. He tries to wall off here. Look at this. He's up nine drones right now, which is not going to help him very much in the upcoming fight. Queen sitting here at the door. Here come the rest of the lings now for Ragnarok, continuing to rally down. He's going to pop this first queen. Also, that evolution chamber taking some pretty massive damage so far. Yeah, nice walling, but that evolution chamber is dangerously close to going down. He's going to try and continue to wall behind it. I'm not Ooh. sure if that queen is a full block, though. No, lings are getting in. I like the finish there. The broodlings pop out and do help a little bit. More lings popping out here for Solar. Solar ends up losing the queen. More and more lings continue to flow in here. 22 lings against six right now on the map, and I think Ragnarok is going to like instantly take game number one. I think so. Bailing Nest is now done for Solar. Solar, but he has no time to actually morph any banelings. The lings are already in the main mineral line. Drone after drone going down. And he decides to pull back there for a moment. We might see him try to pop a baneling out at this point. It might be worth trying to pull one to the side. The ling count has dropped a little bit, at least what's in here, but more rallying in now that queen. Oh my god, the queen gets taken out as well. It's just too many lings, and Ragnarok is also keeping on top of the production right now, so Solar can't even hide away a zergling to make yeah. a baneling. Even he tries more drones right there, going down. That, that gets picked off as well. These drones are so badly hurt at the moment. There's so many links here. This is just not going to end well for Solar. Man, what a tough group for him so far. That's 0-5 so far in this group. Man, Solar going 0-5 is a 
big surprise for sure. I mean, this group is just stacked yeah. from top to bottom. It's I w it, literally you could handpick any group in the world and be like, is he gonna go 0-5 in his first five maps? I'd be like, no. It could be. I mean, you could have like Serral in there, and you have Hero in there, and Maru in there. Be like, he'll take maps. Come on, he's Solar. Come on. But that's just not. That's not the case right now. Uh, and Ragnarok like is trying to extend that lead or that grip on another round of six. Fantastic build order selection, going for a gasless Lingle in there, just getting the speed, no Baneling Nest required. Root mm. forcing his way through. All right, Moon Dance is gonna be our second map. They, they, I feel like that build I haven't even seen before from Ragnarok, where you go like, pool gas, it wasn't the quickest pool, like pool gas, expand, speed only, just constantly make Lings like one drone after the Lings. <laughs> like, yeah. what, what am I looking at here? Kind of an interesting take yeah. on a speedling all in. All right, guys, set number two, Moon Dance is loaded up. Let's get to it. On side gaming, solar. Alpha X, Ragnarok. Look at that. <laughs> Overlord spawning pool, let's go. I think it's the same timing. What if it's exactly the same thing? Could be. Although I wonder if it... <sighs> Is Solar, on this map, Solar read it hmm. incorrectly? Well, yeah, I, well, I don't know. He's taking the wise. forward base. Okay, I was hmm. thinking like maybe, maybe if he takes the back hatchery, he'd be safe, but... Well, I think you want the, you have to hold the big ramp. Otherwise you're holding like a ramp that goes down and then a ramp that goes up that's next to it. I mm. think that, I think that's really the only choice this one. But you're, I mean, if you take the third base back there, it's like more defendable. You can rally your lings in for that defense a bit better, I guess. But the thing is like Ragnarok does not necessarily have to do exactly the same thing. Sometimes I think it can be a, a smart move. You make two things look exactly the same and then Solar would be like, well, now I'm going to make the extra lings. And then Ragnarok might just go three base himself, you know? True. That mind game. Yeah, six links, queen, and then a drone. So yeah, identical like... build to last time, but this is gasless. Yes, so it, it is. will not be a speedling all in. But it will look exactly the same. Yeah. From what Solar can tell, this will look exactly the same. Solar unfazed, though, going for that third hatchery. Yeah. Hmm. Very, very quick there. Gas now going down for Ragnarok. Continuing drone production. Let's see if Solar goes for an overreaction here. Yeah, eight Ling's already in production, so. Huh. In terms of larva efficiency, this already leans in favor of uh, Ragnarok. Okay, yeah. Hmm. Uh, these Ling's and Queen's going to pop out, and, well, I mean, these six Ling's are not really going to get all that much done. We'll see how many he can get out with. He is going to fight a little. I'm actually That's surprised nice he's micro. taking the fight. Like, he took a couple hits there anyways. It was the same amount of links. He was never going to really win that. Yeah. Does he just, like, wall at home and go third hatch? Like, he's just behind, right? Well, Solar didn't make one more set of links, yeah. at least. Yeah, but his hatches are both quicker. Hmm. Natural and third base hatches. Both, like, the third base hatch hasn't even been started from Ragnarok. Yeah, but look at how faster his drone production's online. 26 to 24. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Solar will probably close that gap as uh, the third hatchery production kicks in, but... I feel like huh. if I was in one of these spots, I would want to be in Solar's, you know? Yeah, I agree with that for sure. Interesting take on it. Maybe Ragnarok was hoping for a little bit more of an overreaction there. Mm, could be, could be. And, you know, like, he might even get more defensive as well. Like, maybe we see a quicker wall here from Solar. Maybe we see, you know, maybe not a spine, but hmm. who knows. Roach Warren going down, too. Okay, yeah, Roachhorn at the front as well as speed. The Overlord flying through the back showing that he has no third base. I was thinking that he was going to throw down another third hatchery. It was just going to be later, but yeah. this is uh, quite a long time to go without a third hatch. Yeah, I'm, I am really wondering. Oh, he gets melee. Okay. Well, I was actually thinking for a moment that maybe he goes layer. Like, this seems like a map that might be good for Mutas because you get to hold on a three base like mm -hmm. pretty easily with one sunken line. Or spine line. Uh, huh. 
He's just making roaches. Yes. Yeah, I don't. Looking like a two base all in. If he wins like this, like I, I feel like Ragnarok plays in a way that I don't understand. He even canceled the plus one. That was a fake. He wants him to think that he's playing a longer game. Oh, so it's Very so this tricky. is throw away six lings, have less production than your opponent, have less drones than your opponent, less bases than your opponent, <laughs> and then suddenly make a bunch of units and move across the map. Okay, I like it. Let's go. Well, Solar is responding uh, quite well, too. He's building a lot of roaches himself, and as you said, his production is going to get online a lot faster now. Yeah. Ragnarok does, for now, have a lead. He is making Ravagers. He will have a roach count advantage in the short term, but the economy for Solar is stronger, so if he's able to hold off this first mm -hmm. wave, he has a chance to defend this. Well, uh, that front wall might have a little bit of trouble, uh, since there are some Ravagers already being made. Uh, but he is making some spines behind, and he does have some transfuses on these queens. Like, I think you got to remake that that Roach Warren. Yeah. Uh, like, hopefully he started a bunch of Roaches right before that went down. But I think so. Like, I don't think Solar's going to die to this. Oh, Queens are actually made the, their way across the map. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, no, he walked the entire way. Look at that. Now he does have those additional transfuses as well. He's going to pick off an Overlord. That's a little bit annoying. Brings him out of 72 of 74. With these four Ravagers, he might even be able to start sniping down these uh, spine crawlers there with yeah. Biles. All right, coming in now is Ragnarok. All right, well, he did throw Biles mm -hmm. down, but that spine hasn't actually died yet. So those Biles, like, as of this moment, were still wasted. They're, like, a lot of damage is coming out of that spine. Yeah, and those transfuses for Solar were clutch as well. Yeah. The army supplies equaling now, and with those spines and defender's advantage, Solar's looking pretty good. Another flood of links coming in, though. They will get a surround oh. on the queens. Biles right in the middle, gonna hit all of them. That Three was, queens going down. That was swift right there. Like, the queens overextended just slightly, and insta-punish here from Ragnarok, so very well executed. Pulling back into range of these spines. The fact that that very red spine is still alive is breaking my heart for Ragnarok. Like, when you're throwing your Biles down mid-battle, and it just, like, you have this very red spine. As long as it's still there and shooting, man, it's still doing its job. Yeah. This attack not working out here for Ragnarok, and solar has got a pretty overwhelming advantage. Showing confidence, too, going, uh... Morphing that lair right in his face. Yeah, yeah, the lair is actually a little bit faster for Ragnarok, and he did drone up a bit, so he's not too bad as far as the worker count goes, but he does have less patches, of course. I'm a little bit surprised he takes that base as his third maybe maybe he feels like he needs to do that to kind of catch up hmm. but there isn't a way really in which he's ahead right like this just looks better for solar in every way yeah the roach count for solar right now much better than ragnarok upgrade wise a little bit of an edge towards ragnarok but not by much maybe about 20 30 seconds on that plus one range yeah, not, not too bad there. Uh, you know, he does have the, the quicker speed as well. But the thing is, I don't think Ragnarok has any offensive potential at all. Uh, I think he basically has to sit back. Now, there's a Spire coming up from Solar. This is something I was mm. kind of waiting for to see who was going to go ahead and throw down a Spire. It does feel like a map where Spire could be very, very strong. Uh, and I actually, I thought we might see it from Ragnarok as like a little half risk of a, mm. a way to battle back against a Solar that should max before him. But with Solar throwing it down, that's that's kind of interesting. You like that? Well, he does have the better gas income, and he mm -hmm. kind of, after deflecting that first attack, I guess is feeling confident in his defense. And as long as he's not gunning for a fourth base, he can easily defend and go mute at the same time. Yeah, and the the Overseer just flew over it. Hmm. Uh, you don't have to make the mutas. Right. Like, you you can actually just max out on Roach Ravager here and, and have your opponent be like, oh, well, now I have, like, four slow Hydras, you know, and it's... It, you know, they're going to be able to, you're maxing out quicker than at that point. But look at this. Ragnarok comes in for the attack. Yeah, Ragnarok's getting that Spire, decides it's time to pull the trigger, but no. Solar's prepared. <laughs> he actually canceled the Spire behind this and more four Ravagers and this, taking a favorable trade right now as the supply is continuing to go in favor of Solar. Is, his economy is just too powerful right now. 57 drones to 42. Ooh. I mean, a couple decent volleys there from Ragnarok just barely doesn't kill a Ravager at the end as well. And he yep. GG's. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's that that entire game looked a little off. Like, it it felt to me like he won the first game with that Ling Rush that was a very different kind of Ling All In. And then he made it kind of look the same, and he was counting on Solar playing like a, a scared child mm. or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, he was counting on Solar making multiple mistakes against him because it seemed like 
there was no optimizations really for Ragnarok. Solar just played right down the middle and blocked everything in one. It was an odd choice to go for that build on um, that map too. I mean, yeah. the three bases, you only have one choke point of the natural yeah. to go through. Yeah. To go for that kind of Roachling timing attack is just a little, yeah, it's a little odd to me. Yeah, if they have the third sticking out on the side, maybe you get more done with that, right? They can't use the spines, for instance, because that was a, that was a huge part of the defense, if you recall, yeah. the natural. Like, you had to break through a wall, then there's spines there, and there's all these transfusions, and it just didn't work out. So kind of a weird one from Ragnarok. All right, set three, Tropical Sacrifice. Match point right now, Solar versus Ragnarok. Let's see who will come away with a win. Onside Gaming, Solar. Alpha X, Ragnarok. You know, for a moment there, I was thinking he might put down another pool. <laughs> yeah, no, I was wondering. I was wondering. Uh, all okay, right. Well, hatch first for both players. <clears throat> All right. Uh, changing it up quite a bit. I'm glad he's not going to do the build we saw last game. <laughs> I think we're all glad about that. Honestly, even the first game build, I'm still confused about. But uh, uh just kind of like a coin flip. It's, it felt like at least. Yeah. I mean, that kind of all in. You bank the links. Solar was completely fooled by it. He went for a third hatch and everything, and uh -huh. was absolutely unprepared and. Maybe Ragnarok did some homework and knew that Solar would play greedy, or maybe they had yeah. matched against each other recently and kind of wanted to metagame that and make it look like something it wasn't. Could could be, for sure. Uh, it, it does feel like looking at Ragnarok's play and just remembering some of his games in general, uh, he definitely has uh, good, solid late-game macro games as well, but I feel like a lot of his games is he is just looking for you to make some mistakes and maybe helping to force those mistakes a little bit. But in... There, it's like almost purely strategical. is isn't based off of like micro or something. Because mm. I feel like a lot of the very aggressive players, like a lot of aggressive plays that you see in StarCraft in general, uh, the, the, the offensive player is trying to force a mistake because there is a defender's advantage, but they're right. doing that with like precise micro or something. Whereas Ragnarok is just slightly off in so many ways, like his builds are, that you're like going to be a little bit confused. He does have that kind of unique style to his yeah. attacks. I mean, we were a little bit confused even watching it when he went um, mm. pool and then one drone and then just bank lings up into like 30 before flooding. Yeah. It's unusual. It's unexpected. Mm. You know, I, I, I feel like uh, a lot of players that get very good, they actually, they focus too much on their opponents playing perfectly. So this is almost feels like the opposite. Like it's, it's something that's been like a meme in the past when pro gamers uh, will commentate something at like Home Story Cup or something, mm -hmm. right? Where it's like the meme where whatever happens, the pro gamer's like, it's over. And then <laughs> something else happens together, it's over, right? right. Because like they're considering uh, with perfect play, what does it look like from here? And that would be like, okay, well, yeah, I guess it would be over. But, and then what I'm watching from Ragnarok makes me think it's like the opposite of that, where he's, He's like, it's never over. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's trying to create problems for the opponent to solve, you know? It's something and like that, where where it's like he's he's quite certain people are not going to play perfect, whereas uh, that's not always the way pros look at it. I don't know. I know no, I'm rambling a, a little point. bit, but... It's a great point. That's just, I think a lot of players, when they are... At least their thought process as they're going through the game, they're analyzing the game state, and they're thinking, okay, what should I do now at this point to win? Mm -hmm. And when you're doing that, you're not kind of considering whether you're going to make mistakes, right? You're just trying to choose the optimal strategy in that yeah, moment yeah. with perfect play. And Ragnarok, as you said, just looking to try and make errors on the opponents and kind mm -hmm. of uh, bewilder them a little bit with his opening strategies, as we saw in the, pr yeah. uh, the previous matches. He's going to come up here with a little bit of link pressure. He's down in drone slightly, uh, but there's already banings out, so... Not entirely sure how much he's going to get done. Yeah, hoping to get a response, perhaps, out of Solar as um, more lings are in production. Actually, morphing some banelings himself. Hmm. I think that That's might cool. actually be back at home. It starts his carapace upgrade, oh, no, by the way. Right it's always fun. Always like the uh, hmm. carapace. Ah, uh, unlucky with that hmm. baneling. Solar continuing to have a drone advantage here. 
Yeah, yeah, they're both getting their uh, Roche Warrens at the moment. That plus one carapace, definitely something that could come into play here. We'll see if Ragnarok actually goes for a timing lined up with that. He is starting to drone a little bit, keeping a little bit of pressure on the map with his slings and banes. Yeah, starting but, to add roaches in the third gas geyser as well. Yeah. I I mean, I don't think he's going to actually get any damage here. Like, not even that. He's not going to get that. Come on. <laughs> oh, that's nice. I like that. Yeah, getting the banes is always good. Yeah. Nice little usage of the two links. Plus one uh, ranged attack coming up here for Solar. Much more common. And now Ragnarok pulling a little bit ahead on drone counts as Solar is ramping up with Roaches. Considering Roach production as well, I thought he might just be making a few for safety and then going into yeah. drones. But it, it's funny watching him jump back and forth, huh? Because, hmm. like, I mean, a lot of times what you'll see from good Zerg players is, like, drones and then units or units and then like, oh shit, drones. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that type of thing. Whereas, yeah, it's like three roaches. Okay, now three drones. Now, okay, four roaches. Yeah, there's Five a bit roaches. of an ebb and flow to it, but yeah. Solar right now producing nothing but roaches. Mm. Last drone produced was almost a minute ago, and now Ling's, that makes me think that he's gonna start moving across the map shortly. Oh wow, Solar with the Ling's. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's fascinating, because the plus one carapace is going to make Ragnarok, like, dominate if they're both going Ling Roach. Like, it's not, like, I mean, if they have anything near the same amount of units, what are these Lings going to do for Solar? Like, he's he's definitely going to be going for it, though, but this is going to be two armor Roaches and one armor Lings against zero, zero Lings. Yeah, the armor for Ragnarok is really going to pay dividends in this upcoming fight, but, I mean, Solar, I think he wants to have Lings to reinforce quickly, and he wants to have the gas to build Ravagers on the front line. The question is, is this going to be enough? Because Ragnarok, very wisely going for that plus one carapace and now defending with roaches. Here we go. Yeah, the Ling's not going to do nearly as much as he wants. And actually, there's not that many Ravagers. Sometimes you see Mass Ling with like a good amount of Ravagers for surrounds and vials, but that's not happening here. He's got 300 gas in the bank and not morphing anymore in the right. front lines. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised. Maybe, huh. I'm, not, I'm not sure what that's all about. And look at the Roach counts right now, 29 for Ragnarok to the yeah. 14 of Solar. So Solar really heavily on the Lings with 51, and that plus one Carapace for Ragnarok is just going to prove so valuable if they commit to a fight. I think that might be partly why Solar is backing off right now and beginning to resume drone production, because that plus one Carapace just kind of yeah. would be disastrous to be attacked into with 50 plus Lings. Well, he started to attack for a moment. I'm sure he looked at that and was like, this doesn't look right. Like, mm. nothing's happening to these Roaches. You know, it, when you look at it, it's already plus one armor, so the plus two takes 25% of the remaining attack away from Lings, right? That's that's insane. That's such an upgrade against the Zerglings there. Yeah, so it's a good pullback from Solar. Uh, and he has redrone very, very well. So he is up in that work account right now. Definitely down in army, though. Ragnarok now with his lair getting Roach speed. Both players starting Roach speed at right about the same time, so no timing advantage to be found there. You know what's really funny and weird about this game state is mm. like the carapace Ooh. upgrade. Oh, yeah, that's a nice little one by right there. The, car the plus one armor drones don't even care, man. They just fight the links <laughs> uh, <laughs> to some degree. Uh, uh, but it, you were talking about mind games before that you might practice. Well, hold on. We actually have an attack coming in here now from Ragnarok. Ragnarok does have that plus one uh, range attack now as well to go with his mass That's roaches. So many roaches! 46 yeah. roaches to the 19 right now of Solar as Ragnarok is just pushing right in the front. No Ravagers to be found in this army. Mm. He's just sniping him down, artfully dodging the vials here on the front line. And look at this concave, it's massive! Dude, I, I gotta say, I think. I think Ragnarok wow. knew what Solar was likely to do there because Solar did end up doing a like mass Ling Pump Roach attack. And Ragnarok did plus one Carapace, which normally turns into a Ling Roach attack itself, mm. but he played it defensively with almost pure Roach. Yeah, he has the, no, no Lings at all almost. Yeah, so I think actually this was just a like blind counter against what Solar did there. Like the Lings huh. came up and Solar's like, damn, like those are tanky as hell. That's crazy. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. That was that was weird, though. I I hope that we get uh, some questions about that about that. Well, we're gonna get some questions about the series. We are gonna have a winners interview here in a moment. Yeah, that was interesting build order selection. I mean, maybe there is some kind of mind games. Just game one and game three, just really str good strategic decision making, especially in terms of just straight up build order selection. Yeah, I guess so. But the, the carapace into just sitting there not making links, I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're only making roaches, attack is better generally, right? Right. Anyways, uh, a cool game.
cool game. And Ragnarok uh, looking primed. I mean, he gets out of the group with his score now. Like, he is going to make it. All right, we're going to have an interview with Ragnarok. And he's currently on three wins and zero losses. So Ragnarok, three wins, zero loss. So right now, it's a question whether you're going to make it to round the six or to round the four. So how do you feel right now? You know, honestly, the ZVZ match was my biggest obstacle. I've like practiced. I, I, I haven't practiced the ZVZ match at all. I've never practiced it. And, you know, I didn't have a scrim partner as well for ZVZ. So you know, it was hard to um, practice that matchup. So I practiced all my um, ZVT matches. So I'm really happy to have had good results in the ZVZ match today. I mean, I'm like flabbergasted, Ragnarok. You haven't practiced a single match of ZVZ. But despite that, you defeated Solar, who defeated Dark to make his way to the round of 10. This is so shocking for me. So you went for the same place um, two times in a row, so what was that about? I mean, the second game, you know, it showed that I didn't practice the DVD. You know, I thought, I thought I'd be able to damage um, his face when I went to the extension. But I think the opponent um, saw me going for the movement speed upgrade, Berserkling. But you know, I just played like I practiced, and you know, things didn't go well in the second game. And the reason why I went for the, um, the spawning pool play one more time is because I kind of wanted um, to lure Solar into the mind games. Well, I, you know, I'm having high hopes for your ZVT match today, Ragnarok. So, you know, I just can't uh, get my head around it. So right now, uh, Gumiho is placed first. And he is uh, probably going to be the one that's fighting with, fighting with you for the first place spot in the group. And he's been going for the battle cruiser builds a lot in his recent plays. And it's probably going to be a hard match against him, so have you prepared? Well, I mean, he has a very unique um, style of play. So the Terran players who help me with practice, they don't have the same um, style as Gumiho. So I'm kind of, you know, anticipating how he's going to play it, but I can't really um, surely know what he's going to do. Well, that match is going to be um, happening later on today. Well, before you go, any closing thoughts? You know, I didn't expect to um, move on as the first place in this group. But now that I'm on sitting on three wins, I have, a bit, I have a bit of expectation, I have a bit of pressure. I want to try until the very end and to secure the round of four advancement. Ragnarok, thank you for your interview. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Andy. Uh, that makes a lot more sense now. He didn't practice the matchup at all, and he was just trying to lure him in a mind game. So this it now makes sense why it didn't make sense. Right. Okay, guys, we're going to go to a quick little commercial break here. When we get back, Hero versus Gumiho, a big one for the group.